YouTube, how are you now? Sean here from the EDC Den. Ladies and gentlemen, today is a nice, beautiful, sunny day. I think it's time to take the motorcycle out for a rip and bring you guys along with me. Um, I'm going to show you this bag that I got from 511 Tactical. This is the Rush 12 2.0. Okay, so we'll just go take a little motorcycle trip and have some lunch and I'll show you some of the features of this bag. Normally I would take this bag for camping or hiking, um, but it's a little bit hard with the stay at home order right now for me to get out of my province. Uh, that should be lifted soon, so I should be back over to the Quebec side where I have my cabin and do some camping and all that kind of outdoorsy stuff. So. Hopefully we'll be back out in the nature soon, but for today, it's just going to be an urban adventure. We're going to stay in the city, but I'll take you to a nice park and we will check out this bag. All right, see you shortly. Here is our little horsey for the day. This is the BMW G650 GS. Good little bike for uh, commuting in the city. Also really nice out in cottage country on the logging roads. Definitely have some fun on the dirt trails with this guy. And here's the bag. It's just mounted on this little back rack that comes with the bike. Um, this is just a $12 cargo mesh. I've got it attached on zip ties, one on each side. These zip ties permanently stay here. And then I just kind of pull the cargo net over whatever I'm carrying, whether that's a bag or a jacket or sweater or something like that. Um, you can see it loops around these little parts of the rack and just to make sure it's cinched so that these don't slide off during the ride. Just use these little S carabiners to cinch it up, make sure it's nice and snug. So one of those on each side. This makes for a really quick and easy setup. Of course, it's a backpack. You could wear the backpack if you had to, but I prefer not to do that when I'm riding. Okay, let's hit the road. And we're parked. So here we go, guys. We are at the Arboretum here in Ottawa. On the other side of those trees there is the Ottawa Experimental Farm. And then on this side is the Arboretum, just a park dedicated to trees, of course. All kinds of nice fields and paths here interconnecting. This is actually just on the outskirts of downtown before you start getting into the suburbs. So while it's not the cabin, it's pretty sweet to have a, a nice area like this right inside your inside your city. Right here you can just see a little bit of the canal, the Rideau Canal, world's longest skating rink in the winter. Okay, so we're at the Arboretum full of trees. We're going to go find a nice shady tree to sit under. I'll show you the 511 bag. And I'm going to stop for some lunch. Sorry about the background noise. There's a service truck there working on some of the trees. All right, we'll go get situated. How's this for a nice shady tree, guys? That's a big one. What kind of tree is this, I wonder? But look at this. Got enough shade for 100 people here. I think this is it. I'm gonna set up for some lunch and show you guys this bag. Here it is, guys, the 511 Tactical Rush 12. This is the 2.0. There is still the first version of this bag. They're not going to discontinue the first version. It will still exist. This is just an updated version with a couple very minor changes to it. So here we've got the Moto helmet. Let's get rid of that. This is a, a Thermarest seat. It's just basically a mini version of a Thermarest sleeping pad. These make really convenient little sitting cushions. Uh, of course, there's foldable chairs that you can bring and they're pretty lightweight these days. But this literally weighs two ounces. So you do not feel it 
There's more uses than just sitting on it. You can fold it a couple times and use it as a kneeling pad if you're building a fire. Uh, you can put it out like a like a doormat almost in front of your tent, something to step on when you're taking your shoes off. So these are pretty versatile. Let's get rid of this and I'm gonna kneel on that while I do this little showing of the bag. It just has a little bungee closure. So here it is just kind of folded in half and that'll be a good little knee pad for me. Put that right down there. Get my knees on it much more comfortable so for me this bag is better suited out in the woods um, for camping and hiking it's a little bit overkill for what i'm using it for today which is just lunch in a park um, i did kind of tailor the contents i took the bigger stuff like my little wood stove out um, some of the bigger items that the folding saw stuff that i do use in the woods i took all that stuff out and i just tailored today's carry for a day in the city here on the motorcycle. I left a few of the tools in there just to show you guys. So let's open it up and uh, see what we got in here. This first compartment, this is the larger exterior pocket. Of course, you've got the molly webbing all on the outside here and just a bunch of organization on the inside. Nice zipper pocket, I don't have anything in there. Um, this, just a little pair of Nipex pliers. Here's the Leatherman Wave. This always rides in this bag, just in case it's needed. There's my wallet. Um, keep a fixed blade in here as well. This is the Rake Hornet. Just a nice, lightweight, thin, easy to pack fixed blade knife that I always keep in this bag. And in the pocket beside the fixed blade is a folding knife, courtesy of Mr. Stuart Harvey. This is the Cold Steel Kudu Light. Again, just a nice size, very lightweight, perfect for this kind of bag. Just a solid folding knife with a large blade. And there's a look at that. And lastly in this section, just a spare motorcycle key. In the smaller exterior pocket here, I have a little Maxpedition pouch, and that is just a fire kit. Clearly don't need that in the city, but I did keep it in here for this trip, just to, just in case you never know when you're gonna need a tool or some tape or something, some of the extras that I keep in here. Here's a quick look at that. Uh, lighters, fire starter, flashlight, Swiss Army knife, duct tape, knife sharpener, batteries, all that good stuff, a pen. So that's pretty much occupying that small exterior pocket. Who's that guy? We don't want that guy in the bag. Let's get rid of him gently. A gentle flick. Pew! Okay, so in the bag we've got a cutting board here so I can have my lunch. Got this doohickey in case I wanted to set up the camera. Uh, also made a, a little homemade tripod for this mission, so you could slide your phone in this section and plant that on a water bottle or just use it as a handheld. I know, it's a paper towel roll guys, I realize that. We're on a budget here at the EDC then. Okay, we also have a bottle of water here, bag of lunch, and some binoculars. Here we have a laptop pouch with some paper towel. This is a pocket that I use to keep my sunglasses in. The zipper here is on top. Nice little padded pocket for your valuable electronics or jewelry or sunglasses. More organization and pockets here. Just some tea and some rags and a garbage bag. I almost forgot to mention what makes the 2.0 the 2.0. So we're just gonna look at that really quickly. So the first version of this bag does not have these two features, uh, which is this hidden compartment for concealed carry. You've got this tab and some really aggressive Velcro there. So you simply give this tag a yank. It opens this hidden compartment, which is nicely padded and also has some Velcro in there in case you have a holster that works with hook and loop. 
So there's that. The other thing is in the main compartment here, the laptop holder is raised off the ground by about an inch and a half. So when you drop your laptop into the sleeve, it drops down. And when you're setting your bag down on a hard surface, your laptop will be elevated. It's not gonna smash your laptop. Okay, sorry about that guys, back to the park. That's the gist of it guys. There's a uh, room for the water bladders at the back, all kinds of molly attachments here. There's a look at today's little loadout. I think it's um, a 26 liter capacity if I'm not mistaken. So plenty of room for much more stuff than this. This is again, just for a little day outing. I'm definitely going to do another video very similar to this, but I'll either be going camping or going for a hike and uh, we'll see what ends up in the bag for such an adventure like that. Well, I'm all packed up here, had my lunch, shot my little video. There's the bag all packed up again. So we're gonna head out and call it a day. Hope you guys enjoyed the little outing. I certainly did. A few closing thoughts on the bag. I had a bag very similar to this before this one. It was a sling bag. So it only went over one shoulder and across the body. Uh, it turned out to not like that setup, so I sold it and opted for this one. So I've only started using this one recently, um, but like I said, we'll, we'll get it out into the woods for a proper testing. It's a very comfortable bag. You can see this top portion is very nicely padded. It contours well, it really distributes the weight nicely. And you've got some nice padding here at the back as well. So it's a lot of bag, it's a heavy bag, it's probably a good four pounds with nothing in it. So a lot of bag just for everyday use, but it's certainly a comfortable bag to load up when going for a hike. So we'll come back with one of those videos soon. Alright, so that'll do it for today. It's time to get back on the bike and head home. Hope you guys like this little outing. See you soon in the next video. Take care.